What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five-ish minutes or less. Today, we are kicking off with a big announcement from Stability AI. Stable Diffusion XL 1.0 is finally available. Now, people were really excited about this because SDXL 0.9 was released last month in June and so had sort of whetted people's appetites for the latest Stable Diffusion release. So what's different about this model? Stability AI discusses a few changes. First, they say, the refining process has produced a model that generates more vibrant and accurate colors with better contrast, lighting, and shadows than its predecessor. They also say that this model is faster. Quote, the imaging process is also streamlined to deliver quicker results, yielding full one megapixel resolution images in seconds in multiple aspect ratios. Now, all of that said, there was one feature that beyond any others was the thing that people were most excited about. Certainly, it's the one that I've been waiting for. And that is the fact that you can finally put actual text in your image creations. That is the way that Stable Diffusion closes out their announcement video. They write, dream big, then make the text match. And yes, there are a number of images that all say dream big in different ways. It's been less than 24 hours, but so far, people are really excited about this. Rupranisto writes, SDXL is the real deal. Preparing images for my next AI Gen short film, I prefer these over what I can do with Midjourney. Better depth of field, more variance in layouts, better control, not so glossy. Now, interestingly, according to an SDXL technical report, Rup is not the only person making that comparison to Midjourney and finding XDSL comparable or better. The CEO of Stability AI posted an excerpt from that research from the section called Comparison to Midjourney version 5.1. The TLDR is that after 17,153 user preference comparisons, SDXL was favored 54.9% of the time over Midjourney version 5.1. Different categories showed where the model excels compared to others. In the food and beverage category, people preferred SDXL over 60% of the time, whereas on the other end of the spectrum, in images that were identified as abstract, people preferred SDXL less than 45% of the time. Obviously, what really matters when it comes to just how useful these tools are is consumer choice and understanding which tools are better for which purposes. Indeed, in that same tweet where Ahmad shared that, he said, Of course, Midjourney will get even better and community will make SDXL even better and more flexible and powerful. Now, the other interesting part of this announcement is that SDXL is being featured on Amazon Bedrock. Amazon Bedrock is the managed service from Amazon Web Services that gives companies access to foundation models all in one spot. SDXL 1.0 was actually announced at the AWS Summit that took place yesterday. And again, Ahmad Mustak said, Unveiling 1.0 on Amazon Bedrock demonstrates our strong commitment to work alongside AWS to provide the best solutions for developers and our clients. Now, at that AWS event, Amazon actually announced a number of different AI initiatives. One was called HealthScribe and is a tool that automatically generates clinical notes from patient-clinician conversations in the healthcare context. As its approach has been with many things AI, Amazon Web Services is not going to roll this directly into hospitals or doctor's offices, but will instead be working with partners who actually deliver the end software into those environments. In addition to HealthScribe, Amazon announced that it would be adding more AI tools into its QuickSight product, which is a data dashboard and data visualizer that competes with tools like Salesforce's Tableau. And finally, alongside the new model from Stability AI, Amazon is also adding new models from Cohere and Anthropic into the Bedrock product. Now, interestingly, Adam Solipsky from Amazon Web Services had some choice words about the AI battle and the perception that somehow Amazon is behind. One of the points of difference, he said, is that they've been building their own LLMs versus just outsourcing it to others. Solipsky said, it's interesting that somebody who's not running their own models like Microsoft, which is outsourced to OpenAI, would argue they've got such deep expertise in this area. Solipsky went even farther in explaining how Amazon sees the entire generative AI world. He said... A key concept here, which others don't seem to be embracing, is that customers need choice in generative AI. Customers need to be able to experiment. We're maybe three steps into a 10K race, and the question should not be, which runner is ahead three steps into the race, but what does the course look like? What are the rules of the race going to be? Where are we trying to get in this race? If you and I were sitting around in 1996 and one of us asked, who's the internet company going to be? It would be a silly question. But that's what you hear. Who's going to be the winner in this space? Generative AI is going to be a foundational set of technologies for years, maybe decades to come. And nobody knows if the winning technologies have even been invented yet or if the winning companies have even been formed yet. So what customers need is choice. They need to be able to experiment. There will not be one model to rule them all. That is a preposterous proposition. A central element of our approach is choice for customers. So to get to your question, Amazon is building its own models, but we don't think that's the only answer for our customers. 
Anyways, there's a lot more in that interview. I just thought it was a very interesting look into how the views of the world and the strategies of some of these big tech companies that are competing differs in fairly fundamental ways. And speaking of large language models, new research from Carnegie Mellon, the Center for AI Safety, and the Bosch Center for AI has argued that they've been able to develop an automatic process for adversarial attacks on LLMs that are much more sophisticated and simple than traditional jailbreaks and, quote, allow one to create a virtually unlimited number of attacks. Basically, they say that all the fine-tuning and attempts to make these LLMs like ChatGPT or Bard or Claude safe for the public can be undermined really easily. And the money shot is, they write, perhaps most concerningly, it is unclear whether such behavior can ever be fully patched by LLM providers. Analogous adversarial attacks have proven to be a very difficult problem to address in computer vision for the past 10 years. It is possible that the very nature of deep learning models make such threats inevitable. Thus, we believe that these considerations should be taken into account as we increase usage and reliance on such AI models. Perhaps unsurprisingly, media was all over this one. Excited, it seems, to have another negative narrative when it comes to AI. Lastly, some news from the other side of the world, at least for me, it may be exactly where you are. Nikkei is reporting that the country's government has signed a deal to use Microsoft and OpenAI technology on a trial basis for a number of different tasks, including analyzing government statistics. Now, Japan is a really interesting case study in how different governments are looking at AI. Based on what we've seen like this, like the fact that the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, or MEDI, is also working on a homegrown supercomputer for AI, and the approach that they're taking when it comes to AI training and copyright, it seems like Japan is seeing a lot more opportunity than challenge when it comes to this new technology. Or at least, even if they recognize the challenges, are not going to let those things interfere with them taking advantage as well. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you watch this as a video, please go down and click the like button below. And if you didn't watch it, if you listened instead, make sure you are subscribed to the AI Breakdown YouTube channel. You can find a link at breakdown.network or simply go to youtube.com slash at the AI Breakdown. Thanks again for listening or watching, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.